Hi, everyone. Welcome. I am really excited and a little nervous because there are way more people responding to this than I really expected. But that's great. Uh, I want I wanted that. So I'm I'm delighted. My name is Leela Sinha. I'm a minister. I'm a coach. I'm a writer. I'm a inveterate liberal. <laughs> um, and and all of those things come together for me. And they come together in this very robust, interconnected kind of way. And the challenge, of course, when things come together in this interconnected, robust kind of way is that it's kind of hard to know where to start. So today is about groundwork. Today is about beginning. Today is about what am I doing and why am I here? I have a background in a lot of things, honestly, in, um, in theater, in cabinet making, in IT, in, um, in coaching, in ministry, all of these things, right? All of these pieces in sexuality education. I've done a lot of things. I've been a lot of places. I'm always curious, so I'm always like, picking at the edges of something, trying to understand it better. And when I hit something that's hard, I get super curious about it because a lot of things aren't hard for me. And so when I, when I find something I don't understand or something that feels uncomfortable, I want to know why. I want to know what's going on. I want to know how I got that way and if other people are like that and what happens next. And inquiries like that led me to my podcast, Power Pivot, where there will probably be some overlap between these videos and Power Pivot. And in my podcast, I talk about the intersection between power and ethics and leadership and community because I think those things are deeply, deeply intertwined. And as a coach and a consultant, I end up working with change and discomfort, and I'm coming to understand the absolutely vital role that comfort also plays. So if you want change to happen, then you have to create enough comfort in other places that the person can handle the change. And if you don't do that, then you end up with somebody who's extremely stressed and who has a lot of trouble um, making those changes, even if they want to make them. And so this intersection between comfort and change, discomfort and comfort and change, which is, of course, related to power and ethics. And then where I started my coaching, years and years and years ago, when I first started coaching, I started talking about pleasure and the importance of pleasure and the vital role that pleasure plays in telling us like which direction we should go, what's right and what's wrong how pleasure is one of the most basic animal instincts toward pleasure away from pain. That's how you don't get killed. And when you, when you have the right kind of pleasure, the longitudinally aware kind of pleasure, the kind of pleasure that takes into account not just now, but, but next now and the now after that, When you have that kind of pleasure and you're aware of those signals in your body and in your brain and in your life, then you know, you know what to do. You, you have a knowing most of the time about what to do. And the moments where that knowing is not clear or where that knowing conflicts with other knowing are those moments that we call ethical dilemmas. All of this, all of this conversation has another piece, which is the intensives piece. So I developed this framework 
that talks about levels of intensity, intensives and expansives, and how intense are you, and what does it mean to be an intensive, and why are intensives marginalized in United States and Canadian and a lot of other um, cultures? Why is intensiveness considered less than? And what happens when we stop doing that? Which is not just a conversation about intensiveness, but it also um, leaks into conversations about other kinds of marginalization, which are sometimes overlapping. But when you're an intensive, you have this, this internal force, this power. And you're often simultaneously told that you're too much and that you shouldn't be exercising that power. You shouldn't be owning that power. And that happens, again, not just with intensives, but with all kinds of marginalized persons. And when you're told <laughs> that you should not exercise your power over and over, you get weird with power. And when you get weird with power, you don't handle it well. Either you avoid it, or you exercise it, but you exercise it poorly. And then you get more skittish of it. So, so this intersection of power and intensiveness and change and comfort, because of course power is, in many cases, the ability and the means to change something, or to do something, the ability and the means to act, or the ability and the means to choose not to act, but the fact that that's a choice. So that's the map, or at least those are the landmarks. And what I hope for this is that it starts it starts you thinking, that it starts you talking, that it starts conversations. And that it gets you curious the way that I am so often curious about what happens when one of these things that you think you know or that has always been like that changes. And what if the things that you think are immutable are not immutable? And what if, what if you have more agency than you think? What if you have more power than you think? What if you have more than you think? Or what if having as much as you know you have, there's something you can do? There's something you can do to create spaciousness. When I was a body worker, I used to have people come into my office and say, it hurts. And I'd say, okay, lie down on the table, get ready. And I'd start working on their face. And they'd be like, <clears throat> but it hurts, but it hurts. And I'd say, okay, okay, yes, it does. And everything is connected. So the reason that I'm not starting there is because first, this is connected to this. This opposes this. And then this thing up here is connected to this thing here. And this thing here is connected to your face. So we're going to start with your face. And then I'm going to loosen your neck. And then we're going to open up those pectoral muscles. And your arms and your hands and your sides and your waist and your hips and your thighs and the fronts of your shins and your feet. And then you're going to turn over. And when we get there, there will be enough space here for this to have movement because it's all connected. So what I'm hoping is that when we do this, this creates enough space here for this to have movement. Whatever this is, whatever, whatever is causing you discomfort or pain or the inability to change something that's really important to you, we have to create that spaciousness first. We have to create the mobility first in the whole system. This is why massage and chiropractic go together, because unless you loosen the muscles, the bones can't move. Or if they do move, they go right back to where they used to be. And meanwhile, it's really uncomfortable because those muscles are too tight. So let's open up the system. Let's open up the whole system. Let's get these conversations moving. Let's get this blood flowing. Let's get Let's get these doors open. 
not just for the theoretical sake of opening doors. I love academia for what it is, but it's not enough for me. Academia is not enough. Just thinking is not enough. We need some practical applications. We need some on the ground changes. We need some claiming of power. We need some acknowledging of power. We need some ethics in with our power. We need to talk about how we are in the world and how we can be even better in the world and how we can get rest in the world as we move. How do we rest in motion? How do we keep moving and get enough sleep and get enough food? How do we nourish ourselves and one another? How do we build community? How do we hold each other in a matrix that allows us to be who we really want to be without cutting each other down, without canceling each other, without excluding each other? If you are in my circle, my first hope is that you stay in my circle. <laughs> it's not always possible, but my first hope is that you stay in my circle, which means that I need you and you need me to help us stay engaged with our ethical inquiry, engaged with our choices, engaged with our movement forward, engaged with our health, engaged with our wellness, engaged with our rest, engaged with our mutual process of becoming. We need each other. We need our inquiries. We need our questions. We need our comfort. We need our reassurance. We need our constancy. We need power, we need change and comfort, we need pleasure, and we need love. I'm glad you're here. I don't know what this is becoming, but I'm delighted that you've chosen to join the journey. Talk with you soon.